Hi, this is a quick video to help you to draw the locator design and to draw it as a solid 3D shape. The book does give you an example of how to draw it in a line type of diagram creating surfaces, but in this video and in this class we're going to work with solid shapes. When we look at this, based on what we've done already, you may be thinking of all the different ways you can draw this. So if you think about it, we have a rectangle that is flat at the bottom surface. We have a cylinder. We have another rectangle here. So you could actually start by creating two rectangles and then drawing on the surface here this uh, cut out and using press pull to subtract or cut that out. You could draw a cylinder off uh, to the side, put it in place, move it in place, and then subtract it from the solid piece. You can also use the chamfer to chamfer this corner, or you could draw on the face, front face, these lines that represent this little triangle and then use press pull to start to pull this back. So there are uh, several different ways of drawing this detail. Uh, the way that we're going to in this video draw this is to draw the entire bottom piece as a 2D shape and then use press pull to give it height. And along the way I will show you a couple of other ways of creating especially this uh, chamfer. We'll look at both ways. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is uh, save the file, save it as whatever assignment number that you're working with, and save it in your folder structure. And now I can go ahead and start the line here command in the draw panel. I should go back and say that we are working within the 3D model workspace so let's make sure that everyone has here uh, the 3D model workspace and not the drafting and annotation. You'll be able to see and uh, access those ribbon tools in the 3D modeling. Also at the bottom left corner, there are several tools, tools that you can work with. Uh, some people are more familiar with and like the, the grid. I tend to turn it off so it's a disp it's a preference. The fourth um, or fifth icon, some people like to work with ortho to draw uh, restricted straight lines. I like polar because you can also draw angles uh, and you work with the tracking vector. So it's your preference, especially some of these other tools like some people like dynamic, you, uh, dynamic input <coughs> where if you have that on and you start the line command, you have uh, the tools that are and the graphics that are at your pointer there a little bit more than in the command line. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So your choice, I have the fifth and sixth icons on and later on I'm going to also need here this icon uh, blue that looks like an L shape with a lightning bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and start the line command and I'll pick a point, pull my mouse to the right, type in 4.5 and enter. Pull your mouse straight up and type in 0.5 and enter. If you have that fifth icon on right there, you'll be able to see these tracking vectors as you walk your way around this detail. You can pull your mouse to the left, type in 1.5 and enter. Straight up, 2 and enter to the right 1.5 and then up 0.5 back to the left 4.5 and then C for close. You see we just kind of walked around the bottom piece of this detail. Okay now uh, as a choice we can use the offset command to offset right here this 0.75 so I'll start the offset command Type in 0.75 and enter. Click here the left, the line on the left, and pick to the right. Now I'm ready to draw this circle. I know that the circle is uh, 2.67 
from this small line here and 1.5 from here the front face. So I'll start the offset command and type in 2.67 and enter. I'll click on the small line here and then I'll pick to the left. And now clicking on the offset command I can type in 1.5 and enter. Click the bottom line and then pick up above that line. Now I need this line to be a little bit longer so that I can draw my circle. I can either draw another line or I can click on this line, click inside the blue grip here at the bottom of that line, pull your mouse down and click. The circle is a diameter of 0.75 so I'll go to circle center diameter, click here at the intersection or end point of this line and type in 0.75 and enter. I can then erase these two lines. I'm just going to go ahead and select them and pick the erase icon. Okay, as we did in other details, we can now go over to the view cube and go to the bottom right corner to pick up the southeast isometric view. I'll go ahead and erase this other detail that I had here for your reference. Okay. And now if you look at this detail, we are going 2.5 up in the back, 0.75 in the front. So I'll use press pull. I'll pick here next next to extrude, there's a small uh, blue icon. Click on that. Click inside this back rectangle. Wait for it to highlight first and then click. Pull your mouse straight up and type in 2.5 and enter. Then I can click inside this shape, wait for it to highlight, maybe move your mouse around and click. Pull your mouse straight up and type in 0.75 and enter. Use your escape key to get rid of uh, or press enter to end that command. Now notice that my UCS icon has Z in the going up here and XY is the plane that I'm working within. If for some reason you're orbiting around and you're, you notice that your, your UCS icon is completely out of um, its original location, you can type in the letters U, C, S, and enter. And then just press enter again because you'll be accepting here this world, the world um, coordinate system, which is the AutoCAD default. I didn't have to do it right then, but you may have to in the future. So now these two pieces are separate pieces. We can union them. I'll go here under solid editing and click these two blue circles here, that icon. Select this shape, select this one, and enter. And you see that line disappears. I still have this 2D line here at the bottom. If I didn't change my view to conceptual from 2D wireframe, I can get to that and delete it. I don't think it would matter in this detail because it'll it will be underneath it. But as you start to work with with these um, involved type shapes, you may have to uh, you know delete that line. So I'll just go ahead and erase that line. Hold your shift key down, <clears throat> press the wheel of your mouse. You can kind of see that there are no lines there. The two are union together. Okay, I will change my view now from 2D wireframe to conceptual. And in other videos, we took a look at changing the background by right clicking and picking options. Uh, you can pick the display tab and pick colors and change the background to, to white if you want to change your, your workspace. So now we have a chamfer here and uh, it's your choice whether you use the chamfer or you just draw geometry on this face and then press pull to cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and use chamfer first. So in the modify panel, I can uh, find chamfer right here underneath the fillet drop down right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on chamfer. And then I can click on this edge right here that we're, where we're creating the, the um, chamfer. Your command line will ask you if this front surface is okay. You can go ahead and press enter. And then watching your command line, the very next step says to specify base surface chamfer distance. 
On our detail, you can see that this is 1, so I can type in 1 and enter. And now, really watching your command line, you're, you're asked to specify the other surface chamfer distance, which will be this one here. We can do a little bit of math here and subtract the 3 minus the 2 and come up with another chamfer of 1. So I'll type in 1 and enter. And now, it's asking you to select the edge. With the fillet command, we didn't have to select the edge, but with this one, we have to come back because we were working with surfaces and click on that edge between the two. You can see that it's highlighted and then press enter. And there's your chamfer. That's one way of creating this chamfer. If you want to work with me and look at a different way, you can go ahead and do an undo. There's a arrow curving to the left up at the top there. And another way of, of, of working with this cutoff here, maybe it's not a, a shape that's easy to, to chamfer, we can start the line command and making sure that this tool is on here at the bottom, this this icon that looks like an L shape and a um, lightning bolt. It's called Allow Disallow Dynamic UCS. It gives us the option of drawing right on the surface. You can see that my pointer changes so that the blue line, which is Z, is coming out from that face. So I'm going to make that face active and then I'll click in this top corner, pull my mouse along this top edge, type in 1 and enter and then enter again. I'll do the same thing, start the line tool, make this face here active, go in this corner and click, but this time I'm going to pull my mouse straight down and type in 1 and enter. And then I'll come back on this surface and look for that end point, the end point of the line that I drew earlier and click. And then enter. Because now I have, if I click in space and I kind of highlight the 2D geometry, see what I did was I drew a line that was one inch on the top surface, one inch going down, and then the diagonal that came across, came across here. So now I'm ready to use press pull because I created a um, continuous here loop. I can start press pull. I can go inside that triangle and wait for it to highlight and then click and pull your mouse here back and click and it kind of cuts it off. I can press enter and then hold your shift key down, press the wheel of your mouse so that you can kind of grab these two and erase them, these two lines. There's another one actually here. If you need to erase geometry but you can't get to it without um, here selecting the model itself. You can click in space and pull your mouse across that portion of the detail to include that 2D geometry in it. There it is and then erase it. Okay that's one way. Um, by the way just want to introduce to you here a different concept. I'm going to put that back. We didn't talk about this in class, but I wanted to show it to you. At the bottom, the second from the end, that there's an icon there called Selection Cycling. If you turn on Selection Cycling, and then you click right here where there are two objects that are right on top of each other, you'll get a dialog box in 14 that you can use to toggle, be toggle between those two objects that are on top of each other. This is object um, selection cycling. Okay? Alright, so I can click on line and know that I have it highlighted and then I'll erase it. Alright, <clears throat> well there's our detail. I can maximize this AutoCAD. We don't need the image as a reference. I can now create layers in the layer uh, panel. I'll pick layer properties and here I'll create a couple of new layers. I'll go to the new layer icon and type in text, enter twice, 
enter twice and type in viewport. You can change the color of the viewport if you'd like. And what we're going to do is make that viewport a no plot layer and make it current. With that layer current and a no plot layer, I can now close out of that dialog box and go to layout one. Layout one here at the bottom left corner will bring me into here this layout or also referred to as paper space. If you double click inside this viewport, you can set the scale here to one to one. Setting the scale here to one to one, you'll uh, have a scale that's similar to everyone else's. That's one um, you know option. And then as a good habit, what we would normally do is lock the viewport. There's a small little lock icon that's right next to those those numbers that represent the scale. Once you lock it, you won't have access to those scales. And while you're inside the viewport, when you zoom, it won't change the the scale of the objects. Kind of kicks you out and kind of zooms just the paper. So now I can double click outside of here that viewport. Make sure that you set the text layer current in the layer drop down, go to annotate tab, click on multi line text here, uh, pick a pick a point, uh, pull your mouse across and pick another point, put your cap locks on, and type in whatever assignment this is, assignment, and then you put the number in there and your name. Highlight uh, assignment and make sure you put the number of what assignment this is, and then uh, pick U for underline up here in the ribbon. Click in space and you've got another detail here for your portfolio. It doesn't matter if this goes right on top of that viewport line because it won't print. It's a no plot layer. So now I can go up to the little plotter icon, uh, change the plotter or printer to what printer you're going to be using and uh, monochrome CTB, apply it to the layout and preview it. When you preview, you should make sure that there is no box here because it's on the viewport layer and it's set up as the no plot layer and that you can actually see your object and your text. Several students will have your, uh, their object on the viewport layer or the layer for the object that was probably drawn in layer zero is uh, a no plot layer. So they come into this preview and there's nothing there. So go check your settings and make sure that it looks like this during the um, print preview. I can, I'll go ahead and um, click on this circle with an X to get out of this dialog box and, and cancel here the printing. We are going to transition to dimensioning these details, uh, but for now, there is uh, this assignment. Hope you're enjoying the class and please don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help.